Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today you're joining me in my G23 series. And I've just dropped something. Never mind. Let's start that bit again. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Today you are joining me in my G23 series. If you've been following my content on the Mini, this is my other car that I've been driving since September last year. So almost one year since I've had this car. And I've done quite a lot of content on this car. It's pretty much all the car that anybody will actually need because it's got the performance, it's got the space, and it's quite fuel efficient as well. So what more can you ask for? Now the reason I'm doing this with today is I've had the car for almost a year and it's gone through its first service as well. So I'm going to go through what that entails. And as well as that, you might have seen in my last vid that I did on the G20, it broke down again uh, when I went to update the software. Uh, now the car has been recovered. Uh, well, the car was recovered to the dealership. They forced that software upgrade to be completed, and I've got the car back, so I'm, I'm in it and I'm happy. Now, first of all, let's talk about what the new upgrade features are. And from what I can see on the face of it, the driver's display down here looks a little bit different, not massively different, but just slightly. So, I think um on the face of this for example the temperature gauge now has a car uh, diagram on it with the thermometer uh, i think before it just had a kind of a thermometer in there um but it did used to say that it was cold until it warms up and pretty much that is all i'm not sure about the fuel side here i'm not sure whether that was any different but it is um a slight tweak there just bear in mind if you guys have got any coding done to the car once you update the software all that coding will be gone so zed if you're watching this with we need to get that coding back in because some of the features i'm already missing um such as you know the the windows you know one touch closure when the doors open you know i've just got so used to that other things that uh, are now new on the g20 infotainment system since the update is that it's got this kind of a window feature so if you are driving up to your um, you know, I don't know your McDonald's or your drive-thru or whatever when you get to that location the window will drop down automatically equally if you are going to your workplace and you're arriving at I don't know the car park and you got to put the fob out you can program it so that it remembers that location so as soon as you drive into that location the window will drop down without you having to press any buttons which I think is quite you know kind of a convenient um you know kind of thing to to have updated you know it makes the car a bit more uh, sort of connected but the biggest thing that i've noticed is that you've now got android auto which is pretty damn good because it was only apple carplay before so now yes this system comes with android auto unfortunately i'm still in the archaic ages my phone that i've got is a very cheap phone um i'm not too high tech about phones i'll be honest i've just got a basic samsung phone and it does the job for me that doesn't even have android auto but i'm sure it worked maybe i just need to upgrade my phone now anyway so that's another thing in my personal life that you know first world problems i suppose i just need to get a new phone but now that the car's all working and all of that which is really great you know i'm quite happy just to be sitting behind you know the wheel of my g20 and trust me guys this car feels like limo quality compared to my mini so i'm really like happy like you know this car just feels really great and whatnot so the car again recently went into uh, bmw because it had its first kind of service that was done and i've got my full-on receipt the car doesn't come with a service pack or didn't opt for a service pack at the time when I went for obviously when I went to pick it up and you know when I, when I bought the car um, I just maybe I should have because I had it on my M140 I, I've got it I believe on my M4 I didn't have it on this um, so yeah unfortunately I have had to fork out some money and I must say that it's quite pricey if I'm honest for its first service the car has done 7,788 miles so it's hardly anything in like say the the year that we obviously bought the car and and driven it in in the first year i guess the lockdown situation in the uk has kind of helped as well for me not driving the car so much because i got a feeling that 
if the lockdown hadn't happened this car would have been probably closer to about 10,000 miles by now um, I know it's not a lot of miles even for a diesel but we do drive this car up and down the country so you know it, it I guess it kind of works for for that reason and obviously when you got an M4 you know, <laughs> it makes sense having this car as the more kind of efficient car so yeah it's um it has its perks uh, i guess having a diesel when you're driving an m4 um so the first service on this car is essentially a engine oil and a micro filter service um and that's pretty much it so you know what we've got here is an oil filter and a micro filter and some oil and anybody want to take a guess as to how much that service has cost me from a main dealer um if you have made your kind of you know thoughts and whatnot are you surprised when I say that this service cost me two hundred and seventy-two pounds and thirty-four pence, which includes labour and VAT? Now let me break that down for you. So that is two hundred and seventy-two pounds and thirty-four pence for a basic, you know, the first service, and that's broken down as oil filter, which was seventeen pounds and four pence, micro filter, which I believe is the cabin filter. Um, that was £61.25 pence. and then there's a bit of scope work that they're going to do I suppose when they are updating the software here um, that was £17.33 um, and then there's some other kind of work that they've done like for 26 quid, which is like another standard scope here and there but anyway that's all just nitty gritty the oil that they've used is the 5W30 which is the approved Castrol BMW Mini oil um, it says Castrol on here I think anyway um, and that's the biggest chunk of it which was five and a half liters and that cost 88 pounds so just bear in mind guys if you haven't got a service pack on your car like the way i haven't your first service will cost you something in the region of around you know 270 quid it might be a bit less it might be a bit more depending on how much discount you can get from your dealer i think they initially quoted me about 300 pound and i managed to get a little bit off because i know what's entailed in like the main service when I had my F30, that went in for its, uh, the first service, I believe, at that time, and that cost me around about £240. Nothing's really changed because essentially it's the same engine and it's the same amount of oil that they take. So it's just going to be, you know, in the, like an inflationary increase in terms of their uh, labour and their parts costs, really. So, yeah, there's probably a bit of like sort of wriggle room around, I suppose, um, but not much. Well, yeah, about 270 odd quid is what it's going to cost you for its first kind of service. Um, if you've got like a service plan then you know happy days for you but you would have paid up front for most of that service anyway um, but there you go so that's what's, what it's cost me so I'm quite glad that I've got the car back you know functioning pretty well like the way it should I'm hoping that it doesn't break down again you know with any kind of software glitches I'm hoping that BMW have sorted them all out for you know for not only me but for pretty much like any one of you guys out there um, what I would suggest is that if you have got the software update you know sort of pinging on your iDrive system then I personally wouldn't want to go ahead and touch that get into a dealer and let them like sort it out because you know if you have watched my video um, where the car just went into a complete markdown then you'll understand and if you haven't then I'll link it in the description or somewhere on the screen now down here somewhere uh, so you can go and watch that because it was I was stranded for pretty much like eight hours of the day uh, when the car went into a marathon but like I say I'm quite fortunate and I've got the car back now functioning like the way it is guys I think I've done a lot of rambling in this raid um, thanks for watching uh, if you have found this video useful and informative then definitely give it a like and share and subscribe to the channel and hopefully guys I'll see you on the next one take care bye